Hi, my name's Lauren Howard. Uh, I'm a retired art teacher. Uh, I taught for 25 years in public school and uh, state of Minnesota. But all my teaching was not public school. Uh, 23 of those years I taught in a correctional school for delinquent boys and girls. And uh, I do artwork because it's what I do. It's like eating and drinking for me. And do my painting, I do sculpture, I do pottery, I do a variety of things because I get bored doing one thing all the time. So. so what's the first thing that you remember making and being proud of as its own piece of art? For myself? Yes. Well, the, the, the piece that I remember, the first one I did that was uh, a completed finished painting was an assignment in college my first year. And uh, I painted a abstract of the interior of the laundromat. Because when I was in college, I spent a lot of time there and I knew the laundromat. So I did a painting of it. And uh, I got a good grade on it. I got an A. And that was the beginning of my painting career. And I gave the painting to my mother. And uh, she had it for many years. And now I have it. I still have that piece of artwork. As far back as I can remember, even in even before I went to school, first grade, uh, I liked making things. I liked drawing. And I was intrigued. Uh, I saw a picture one time. I was about six years old. A little character named Pinocchio. And his nose was sticking out, yet he was on a flat piece of paper. And that intrigued me. I said, how, how do you do that? How do you make that nose stick out like that? So I got out a pencil and some paper and I tried to do it and that was the beginning of my drawing career. And uh, in high school, where I went to a small high school in Windsor, Vermont, they didn't have art programs. I think I had one art class when I was a senior and uh, we did, did some painting. And my art instructor liked what I did so that inspired me. My mother uh, liked what I did. Uh, she always encouraged art. She liked artists. And I grew up in Cornish, New Hampshire, where there was a, uh, an artist's league uh, in the early 1900s, up to 1935, when I was born. And um, that kind of inspired me, too. I always hoped that uh, some of those vibes from those artists that had uh, practiced there in the Cornish colony uh, were still floating around in the air. And I think probably they were. So how do you think uh, your economic class has affected uh, your art career? <laughs> well, uh, like I said, I was a teacher. Was, you know, even though you like art and can do art, you don't always make money doing it. So uh, you got to make money. So I was a teacher, but I really wanted to be a teacher too. Uh, it's not something I did instead of art. It's something I did because I wanted to work with young people and help young people. Uh, so they'd have good good experiences. And uh, of course, in the correctional school where I worked, art was a great subject to teach. And um, so I, I didn't really uh, get exposed to art until I, I really got into college. And that was after four years of the Navy, where I went to get the GI Bill. And it was with the GI Bill and hard work that I got through college. But they don't sell much. Uh, here in this area, people don't want to pay too much. You get over, say, $300, and you're probably not going to sell anything. Uh, but I still keep on doing it. And I, I don't think, uh, I don't know, you have to, you have to get a reputation. You have to uh, become recognized. And there are ways to do that. Uh, but, uh, as a as a artist who has not not succeeded at being recognized as an artist or whose work has not been rec recognized as worthy of uh, fortune and fame, uh, you just keep plugging along and you do it because it's something something you do. I know a lot of artists uh, like that. All the communities all over America, any town you go to, any city, you're going to find artists, and there are some good ones, some very good ones. Uh, it's an old saying says, many are called, but few are chosen. And I think that applies to, <laughs> uh, what do you say, amateur artists. And you're pretty much an amateur until, you know, you start selling stuff and 
people are willing to buy it. So in, in terms of gathering supplies, uh, how expensive is it to be an artist and make art? When I buy oil paint, I buy it in large tubes, as I usually paint big. A uh, large tube is like 200 millimeter tube. And um, a tube, the yellows and the reds are more expensive. A, a, a tube of yellow is going to cost you $47 for one tube. It's a large tube, but still, it's a lot of money when you need maybe 14 or 15 colors in your palette. Uh, so it, it's quite expensive for the paint. Uh, it depends on where you buy, too. I mean, there are places where you can get, get really good discounts, and that's where I go. But uh, there is quite a bit of expense. Then it, you either make your own canvases, you buy the canvas, and you buy the stretcher frames, and you staple and put them together yourself, save a few dollars. Or you can buy them and uh, the different sizes. And again, they get to be quite expensive. You can pay us, you know, 37 to up to $50 for a 18 by 24 or say 24 by 36. So there's quite a bit of money into a painting. What advice would you give to someone who wants to become an artist? Well, I've done that over the years. I've met lots of young people who wanted to be artists who questioned me about that. And I say start young. Uh, and uh, get some, some good training behind you, go to school, uh, go to a good art school, and, uh, you know, if, if you can make money at it, fine, but if you can't, you're going to have to have another job, like maybe being a teacher or... Uh, and then there are many fields of art, too. It depends on what kind of art you want to get into. If you want to be an illustrator, uh, something like that, or a cartoonist, uh, there's a special direction and market for that. But if you just like being a painter and like making sculptures, uh, that's that's a different kind of market, and it's a hard one to to get into uh, until you've until you've established yourself as a good artist. So, what have you been working on recently? Well, uh, painting I finished this morning is over there, leaning up on that stool. It is a uh, pretty much an abstract painting. Uh, it's uh, called Positive Negative Design. And uh, it's, uh, I used a crab for the design, although it's not a painting of a crab. It's a painting using the crab for the design. And uh, Positive Negative, uh, you can see, if you look at the painting, you can see what I mean by Positive Negative. I've never done it as a painting. I don't know if anyone else has either, but... Uh, I thought I'd try it and it worked out pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty well pleased with the finished painting. I haven't put my name on it yet, but uh, it's done. Nice. And then uh, more, another more recent one is the angel that you see here. It's a loop 2-9. It's a painting that was done for the Messiah, which being, is being produced here in town for Christmas. And uh, Luke 2-9 says... And the, and lo, the angel came down, and uh, let me see. I have to read this. I can't remember how it goes. And lo, the angel of the Lord came down upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And that's my uh, my rendition of of that saying, and that will be flashed on the screen when they when they play the Messiah, when that part of the uh, Messiah comes up. So, now there's a couple of uh, oil paintings here that I've done. Uh, two moths on some blossoms, and then a snow scene beside that. And if you want to see one of my sculptures, there's a, a flower there. That's one of my sculptures. I call that a, a perennial because it uh, comes around every year. I'll get a side shot too, so we can see the three dimensions. Nice. And then behind here, there are some other paintings. I have paintings all over the place because, of course, I haven't sold them. There's <laughs> <laughs> uh, one. This is uh, called Stroller. Whoa. Another fairly abstract painting. Uh, I got that. I, that, was, that was painted from a picture that I took at the flea market. 
this lady walking along with her boy in the uh, stroller. And I made it into this uh, very colorful and uh, unique abstract painting. Now there's another one there that's a big uh, pitcher plant. It's a sculpture. It's really a sculpture done by nature. That's what it is. It's, uh, and then behind that we have one of my favorites. This is uh, whoa. This is a uh, orangutan, and that's uh, that's a, really a comment on, I guess, the history of painting. You might say, is this orangutan swinging uh, in an old what what you might might recognize as a similar to a Jackson Pollock painting. Uh, but then you have all these lines and vines and the orangutan is resting on this vine coming down. Uh, totally abstract. So there's another one there. 